Hey everyone, Roman Prokopchuk here. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the consumption of the content, both the war in Ukraine playlist, listening and, and playing the podcast on YouTube, listening on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, on the website, digitalsavageexperience.com. So be sure to follow, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and everything is much appreciated. So everybody's like in an uproar. This war wouldn't have happened if Zelensky wasn't president and, you know, Biden and so on and so forth. This current conflict actually started in 2014. It's been ongoing, and then obviously it materialized into something bigger. So Crimea was annexed in 2014. Uh, Donbass, the, the separatist movement in Donbass, fed by Russia, weapons provided by Russia, actual Russians fighting within Ukraine, you know, stating that they're on vacation or on holiday and they just got lost or so on and so forth. But if you're a student of history, you know things repeat themselves. This has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, artificial famines, genocides, aggression towards the Ukrainian people, Russia pretty much trying to wipe out every notion of the Ukrainian language, culture, and heritage at every chance that they got. So it's it's really funny that you got all these Russian propagandists, all these trolls saying this, that, or the other. So it, it, it's baffling, but I just want to kind of break down some facts from a blog post I wrote a few months ago about the uh, the aggression. Basically, Russia has been destroying the Ukrainian language and culture for over 300 years, and here's how. Obviously, it's been longer than that, but I just wanted to recap the many things that have gone on in the past 300, 350 years. So in 1720, Peter I decreed banning printing in the Ukrainian language and seizure of Ukrainian church books. Obviously, that's not suspect at all. And then you're talking about eradicating a culture. That kind of sounds like Nazism and genocide to me. But, you know, who am I? Just another person, I guess, on YouTube with uh, a Ukrainian heritage born there, Ukrainian, uh, you know, family there and members of my family still fighting in the, uh, the military currently. But, you know, what do I know? Uh, 1729. Peter II ordered all government decrees and orders written in Ukrainian to be rewritten in Russian. 1763, Catherine II banned teaching in Ukrainian at the Kiev Mohyla Academy. 1764, Catherine II ordered the Russification of Ukraine. That doesn't sound suspect at all. 1769, the Russian Orthodox Church ordered the confiscation of Ukrainian primers and church books. 1775, the destruction of the Zaporizhian Sich and closing of Ukrainian schools at the offices of the Cossack Regiment. 1789, the Polish Shem Commission on Education ordered the closure of all Ukrainian schools. 1804, according to a special royal decree in the Russian Empire, all Ukrainian language schools were banned, which led to the complete degradation of the Ukrainian population. 1832, reorganization of education in Ukraine transformed all teachings into Russian language. 1847, increased persecution of the Ukrainian language and culture, the prohibition of the best works of Taras Shevchenko, Patanimun Kolush, Mikola Kostomarov, among others. 1859, Ministry of Religion and science of Austria-Hungary attempts to replace Ukrainian Cyrillic alphabet with Latin and Eastern Galatia and Bukovina. 1862, closing of Ukrainian Sunday schools for adults in the Russian part of Ukraine. 1863, Voluev Circular Circular a secret decree that prohibited censors from giving permission to the publication of Ukrainian spiritual and popular educational literature is referred to Ukrainian as a separate little Russian language that never existed, does not exist, and shall not exist, and their little Russian tongue used to be commoners is nothing but Russian corrupted by the influence of Poland. 1864, adoption of a charter which stated primary school education was to be conducted only in Russian. 1869, introduction of the Polish language as the official language of education and the administration of the Polish Eastern Galatia. 
1870, Minister of Education of Russian states that the ultimate goal of education for all Inorsi, non-Russian, literally people of another descent, is unarguably their Russification. 1876, Alexander II's decree banning the printing and import from abroad of any Ukrainian literature and to ban Ukrainian stage performances and Ukrainian lyrics and music scores and folk songs. 1881, prohibition of teaching in the public schools and conducting church sermons in Ukrainian. 1864, the ban by Alexander III of Ukrainian theater in all the provinces of Little Russia. 1888, a decree by Alexander III banned the use of the Ukrainian language in official institutions and of Ukrainian given names. 1892, prohibition to translate books from Russian into Ukrainian. 1895, prohibition by the main administration of printing and publishing Ukrainian language children's books. 1914, 1916, Russification campaign in Western Ukraine, the prohibition of the Ukrainian word education and church. But, you know, who am I? So then, believe it or not, things did not get better until Stalin's rule. Which, you know, it really didn't. But where somewhere between 4 and 7 million Ukrainians were starved to death in an attempted genocide, that is a lot of Ukrainian speakers that could not no longer pass on a language and culture. So basically, Russia has been trying to destroy the language and kill off Ukrainian people and replace it with its own culture, its own values, its own heritage. If, if, if that's not anything less than genocide, then, you know, I don't know what actually is. These are all like the suppression of the language, the destruction of the actual um, culture and heritage and how that's actually happened. But, you know, y Ukraine also has suffered not only culturally, not, not only trying to be stripped by the language and heritage, but also by, you know, victimization in terms of genocide, like I mentioned, uh, artificial famine. So this war is literally fighting for existence. If, you know, we just stood down and, and Russia came, that would have been the alternative. You know, Russia leaves, there's still a Russia. If Ukraine didn't fight, there is no more Ukraine. So I don't know what people are actually talking about that don't understand history. But from 1918 to 1921, Russian Bolsheviks waged war against the Ukrainian People's Republic and started the USSR occupation of Ukraine. Since 1929, Russia has par participated and practiced forced collectivization, which led to one to two million people killed or deported to gulags. In 1921 to 23 and 1946 to 47, artificial famines claimed the lives of anywhere from one to five million victims. From 1930, to around 1950, the Great Purge claimed the lives of 200,000 victims. From 1932 to, two, to 1933, Holodomor, the genocide of Ukrainians, claimed the lives of between 4 and 5 million people. An artificial famine where all food and grain was destroyed or taken. In 1939 to 1941, Russia had a forced deportation from western Ukraine into remote regions of Russia, which saw 300,000 deported and 24,000 killed. In 1942 to 59, Russia waged war against the Ukrainian insurgent army, which led to the deaths of 153,000 Ukrainians and 132,000 Ukrainians were repressed. In 1944, Russia deported 200,000 Crimean Tatars from native Crimea. They were only able to return when the Soviet Union fell and Ukraine gave back kind of their land and let them resettle. Majority of them actually died on this mass journey and deportation by Stalin. So, and then Russia came and basically took everything again. So it, it, it kind of sucks for, you know, Slavic Ukrainians, indigenous uh, Tatars, which are closer to uh, kind of Turkish heritage. So anybody, um, you know, faced kind of the wrath of the Soviet Union and the Russian empire in general from 1960 to 1989, Russia conducted political imprisonment of Ukrainian dissidents. Ukrainian political prisoners comprise of at least 65% of the USSR's concentration camps, which numbered around 1,000 people. 
the number of Ukrainian victims is not a final number and does not include those persecuted for their religion. So these are in the total numbers, and Russia has killed somewhere of almost around 10 million Ukrainians in the 20th century alone. So who is the aggressor in this equation? Who has the history of violence and brutality in its DNA going back all the way to Ivan the Terrible? It's sad that a majority of the world does not know this history. Being born in Ukraine and my family persecuted for our religious beliefs, I know firsthand the impact. The statistics come from the Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance and the Center for Research of Liberation Movement. So, like I said in the beginning, uh, you know, some of the stuff I mentioned was basically destroying, completely destroying and wiping out the Ukrainian language, which is different than Russian because Ukrainians understand and speak Russian, but if you speak Ukrainian to a Russian, they have no clue what, you know, what's being said. Maybe a few words, but it's not, not at all. And the destruction of literature, the, uh, the banning of, you know, writing specific works or translating into Ukrainian, destroying the culture. And then ultimately, like I said, destroying actual lives, millions and millions of Ukrainians have been slaughtered over the centuries, tens of millions, really. And the world just sits there and says, oh, Zelensky did it. It's, it's Biden. You know, Russia's the good guy. Let, let's get the bio labs. It's a, it's a funneling front for, for Biden and, and, you know, you know, sleepy Joe and this and that, like knock that off for real, go read a book, go read some history, go ask some historians, do your own research and stop listening to the mainstream media and this nonsense. Slava Ukraini, Heroim Slava, Slava Bohu, God bless.